here's class 21 and we're going to uh, continue um, here's an example um, where I have uh, this bar that's one inch wide it's got a quarter inch hole in it it's three eighths inch thick it's got a stress uh, or got a force that's between 800 and 300 um, so it's in tension uh, so it's always in some amount of tension but it's uh, a fluctuating back and forth uh, between the 800 and 3,000 pounds and we want to estimate the safety factor guarding against uh, a fatigue failure right in here uh, the different um, ones uh, that we would have in here and so we'll start out with um, first off get the the, the uh, material properties right so we want to get both the yield strength and the ultimate strength for a 1018 uh, uh, steel let's see cold drawn so we got cold drawn steel bar uh, right there and so um, I guess we could look that up and our you, uh, you, you could trust me that it is 54 ksi and 64 ksi all right and let's see we want to get the stress concentration here and in order to do that we need the diameter divided by the width so the diameter is 0.25 and the width is 1 and I can do this math All right so let's look that up let's find the stress concentration in here and that's this guy right here and we have 0.25 right and my 0.25 I said that we have 2.42 all right so it's just a little bit above right right here is where it crosses but right right here so 2.42 is what I estimated this to be so I have a K T of approximately 2.42 now we need a Q, so we look up our notch sensitivity, notch insensitivity, and this is normal stress, so we go to this guy, and we just found that we had 64 was our uh, uh, ultimate strength, and uh, the diameter of the hole is 0.25 so that means that the radius of the hole is 0.125 and so we're like right in here somewhere right and I said that we have 0.773 I must have used the equation or equations for this right here so I get a Q of 0.773 so Q 0.773 so I can find my stress concentration for fatigue with 1 plus Q KT minus 1 right or 1 plus uh, 0.773 times my uh, 2.42 minus 1 and I get uh, 2.095 All right, so for the uh, nominal stress that this thing is going to find, we would use an area that's going to be um, the width minus the diameter times the thickness, which is kind of makes sense, right? So the width is one inch, the diameter is 0.25, and the thickness is 0.375. So the area comes out to 0.2813 inches squared. So the maximum stress that we'll find is going to be the F max divided by the area. So that's 8,000, nope, 3,000, excuse me. 3,000 divided by our 0.2813. And this is the nominal right there. Um, I could have just applied that. Yeah, 
I could have just applied it right from the beginning uh, to the thing, but it doesn't matter. 10.66 KSI. I divided by a thousand right in there, by the way. Um, and then min nominal F min over A or 800 divided by 0.2813. So I get 2.844 KSI. So for my uh, max, it's going to be uh, KF times max nominal. Should have been able to do this in a simpler step, but that's okay. 2.095 and 10.66. And what do we get uh, from that? I get 14. Well, no, 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 no. We're looking at this. I gotta rewrite this thing out. Hmm. Let me do this. Ah, sorry. I'm tired. It's Friday. It's an excuse, right? Um, it's Monday. I can't do this. Oh man, it's Wednesday. I can't do that. Whatever. All right. So um, let's say we have an alternating um, nominal. It doesn't matter what order we we do these in, but. Um, it, I, I used to have this example done differently, right? So this is the max minus the min divided by 2. So we have 10.66 minus 2.844 divided by 2. So we get um, 3.911 KSI. And we have the mid-range nominal is just the these added together it's really just the average so we have the 10.66 plus 2.844 divided by 2 and uh, so we get 6.752 KSI so if you want to have the alternating, we take care of KF times the alternating nominal, and that's 2.095, which is up there, right? Times our 3.911, and that comes out to 8.192 KSI, and then we have the mid-range KF and we have the mid-range nominal, so 2.095 and our 6.752, 14.156 KSI. And the reason why I did it in this order was that it used to be a guidance not to apply this to this. Like that we would we would then instead only apply the, the fatigue stress concentration to the alternating. But because Shigley does it later on, they, they include it, I decided to uh, just not add that amount of complexity, uh, additional amount of complexity uh, to this. Um, okay, so we wanna do the whole shebang. And so this thing is cold drawn and um, so we want to do all the modifying factors to this. So we have, uh, first off, the, the uh, lab sigma prime endurance strength, 0.5, and that's times 64, so that's 32 KSI. Then we are gonna have Ka. Um, all right, so Ka, I went ahead and found it. I didn't, I'm not gonna calculate it here. I went, uh, and this will be different in the 11th edition, right? KB is equal to one because this is axial, right? Remember that's the size factor. And uh, the size factor only applies to the, uh, the bending and the torsion. Uh, when it gets to axial, it's set to uh, uh, um, set to one right here, right? Where that's where it says right there. For axial, there is no size effect. KB is equal to one. For 
Kc is um, the load factor, and now that is axial. We haven't used that one yet, so that's 0.85. We do need to have a, uh, uh, an adjustment for that, 0 0.085. And all the others we're going to set to uh, 1. So Kd, Ke, and if there was a Kf, all of them equal to 1. So our corrected, we like to call it fully corrected, 0.89691. 0.85 and then 1, 1, 1, and we have 32. And that's 24.39 KSI is the endurance strength. So we go through um, the various ones. Let's start with Langer. And I have a good friend named uh, John Langley. He was also an engineer and the Merchant Marine Academy. Um, everyone called him from then on after we get, we covered this he was Langer forever after and even still is to everyone so we're gonna have the uh, Lang uh, safety factor and this is really a check against static f yielding right so the first time this thing gets loaded up this way we will add the mid-range and the alternating together. And so that was 54 yield strength and uh, 8.192 right there plus our 14.156 and we end up with 2.42. So that's our safety factor against um, it failing and bending and uh, or, or stretching in and not stretching back to the uh, original uh, shape. Um, noteworthy is that we didn't generally use uh, stress concentrations uh, for the static case, um, and but this is it's a check to do. Then we do the um, the Soderberg and. That's going to be 1 over the alternating divided by the endurance plus the mid-range divided by the yield, right? So that is 1. Um, sigma A was uh, 8.8 8 9.2 divided by our endurance strength of 25. 4.39 and then our mid range was uh, 14.16. I don't know why we had so many decimal places in there. And our uh, yield strength is 54. So we end up with 1.67. The Goodman. So we are predicting infinite life with some margin. Right? Is it satisfactory? Mm, I don't know. Now we're going to go the alternating divided by the endurance plus the mid-range divided by the ultimate. That's the big difference right there, right? And I think of these as apples to apples, right? Because we have, here's a fluctuating stress based on fluctuating strength. Here's a steady stress divided by a steady strength and so 8.192 uh, divided by our 24.3 uh, 9 look like a 4 for a second not being very neat and our 14.16 divided by our uh, ultimate of 64 Right, so there's the difference as we look up there. We expect a larger safety factor because this is the most conservative one, but this is the one that was most commonly used. Um, and then I can plug and chug the other ones, but just for uh, sake of looking at them. The Gerber is 2.24 and the ASME elliptical is 2.35, right? Worth kind of maybe uh, uh, taking a look um, at all of these things. 
I have a place to uh, plug them in so we can get kind of a sense uh, of this. Um, so first off, uh, we want to create this curve, right? So um, we have 54, so it's like right, here's 55, here's 54 right there. That is the yield. The um, ultimate is 64, which I believe comes to right there. Right, so here's our ultimate. Our endurance, here's 25, but we got 24.39, so it's just underneath it. Here's our SE. Um, we still need our yield strength, which would we say that was 54, right? So it's right in there. So here's our yield strength. So for the yield strength, the yield curve, I don't know, my, my thing is just long enough here. My ruler, just the right length uh, for this. And um, okay. That's the Langer. Here's the Soderberg. And then here is the Goodman. Right in there. And this might be something that I would ask you on an exam to graph out. So make sure that you know how to do it. And uh, let's see. So we can sketch in the others, although they're going to be like, you know, we, we can't really say what the curvature really looks like onto the thing, but we can kind of. And then the elliptical one, sometimes I think they actually climbs up. Uh, sometimes it gets over. Like, so this one is the Gerber. but it doesn't go ever go above the endurance strength but some but but it might pass over uh, uh, the Gerber I might have exaggerated how much the arc of the Gerber right there but what we would do on here is we would plot out our um, uh, stresses right here. So our stresses, where did I say that they were? They were at 8 of oh, 14 right here. So here's 15 right here. So here's 14. Right. So here's sigma m. And then our alternating was 8 point. So here's like maybe that's 9. This is like 8. 8.12. So here's our alternating. So where they meet up right here. And our load line goes from zero and then out into space over here. So right there is where we're going to be predicting um, our uh, Langer. No, no, our, our Soderberg. Here's our Goodman. And these two fellows, there's our Gerber and here's our Langer. So we could we could do all of these, and I don't know, I don't mind doing it. So I'm going to call that this O, A, B, C, D, E, and F right in there. So um, let me get these distances quickly. I won't try to belabor this too much. I'm going to call O, A um, is going to be, what's my O, A? is approximately, uh, I'm going to call it uh, 30 millimeters. And then OB is approximately, and this should be all approximately, right? Uh, that looks like it's somewhere like 50. And this looks like uh, OC is approximately going to be um, 54, maybe? And then uh, my D looks like he could be like somewhere right around 67. My E looks right on 70 to me. And I don't know that I drew those curves correctly. 
and then OF is um, that looks to me like it's pretty close to 73. So if we take those ratios really quickly, right? So um, maybe I draw this up here and I write N uh, Lang is going to be, that's going to be our, uh, for the Lang, that's the OF over OA. So I end up with 73 divided by 30 and I get 2.43. Remember that's where I got 2.42. Um, my, let's see, I guess I went in order. I want the solder right in here. And the solder is going to be the OB over OA. All right, so the O, that's going to be 50 divided by 30. And I get 1.66, right? I got 1.67 uh, before. Uh, my Goodman, I think you get the drift, right? And uh, this is going to be the OC over OA. Right, so that's going to be the 54 divided by 30. So I get 1.80 compared to my 1.79. And then um, uh, Gerber, just go Gerb. That's going to be the OD over OA. And this is pro I don't know that I did these ones right, right here. So that's going to be 67 divided by 30. And I get 2.23. Not bad. And then the ASME is going to be the OE over OA. And that's going to be uh, 70 divided by 30. Or, wait, no, I did it already. Did I do that one already? How did I get the same thing? I had 67. I didn't divide 67. All right, that's 2.23. And, oh, and the other one becomes 2.33. I gotcha. All right, which compares this. So there, I was pretty much, pretty much on. Now the last thing we want to do for this example, um, and how long is the example going for? 22 minutes. I want to go my what if. What if? Yes. What if? Um, the mid range. No, the alternating were 30. KSI and the mid range were 10 KSI. Well, then um, my Goodman safety factor would become uh, for one thing, this is kind of obvious this was going to happen right here, but I'm going to have 30 divided by 24.34, right? So obviously it's going to fail there. Uh, 10 divided by my uh, 64 right here. And I get a 0.72. Therefore, will fail. But then when? Well, what we're going to do is find our completely reverse equivalent right here. And uh, that was going to be sigma A over 1 minus sigma M over ultimate. And that is 30 divided by 1 minus uh, 10 divided by uh, uh, 64. And we end up getting 35.56 KSI. And that would be the stress we would use then inside of this. to predict the life, right? On the graph, um, that 30, right? So I, I predicted something up here. I don't know. There's my 10. Here's my 30. So in my ultimate, let's see if I can, oh, I did get it to cross. It's going to be boom, right up there. So that's the sigma rev, if that's the point in my hypothetical uh, that I'm coming through right there. 
and this is the completely reverse stress uh, that we would use inside of here. Right? So here's here it is graphically, and here it is on the um, uh, with numbers. There you go.